What is going on guys? My name is Micah and this is going to be the seventh video in this iPhone game programming series. In this video we're going to cover the start, clear, and game over methods, which are pretty standard methods for most simple games like this. So um, let's just get started. Actually one thing we need to do before we do that is in the center on node function, um, we're actually going to take out this position and scene dot y here where we subtracted it from the world dot position. This is just going to make it so um, when the hero moves vertical, the camera is actually not going to follow him. Because we have a horizontal scrolling game, we don't actually need that vertical uh, movement. So you see now that um, when you hop here, the hero just hops in place and um, the camera doesn't actually follow him in the vertical direction. So now that we got that out of the way, we're going to make a method in the ML hero class called the start method. There are actually going to be two start methods, um, one in the hero class and one in the scene class. Um, I'll discuss the differences uh, when we get into the scene class. So in the ML hero header file, you want to put the start function as well to make it so it can be accessed outside of the class. And all the start method is going to do is it's going to start the hero um, moving forward. And it's going to move the hero forward indefinitely until he hits an obstacle. So to do this, we're going to do the same thing we did with when we actually moved the hero um, with one more thing added. So we're going to do SK action, move right. Actually, no, we're going to call this increment right because we want the, um, we want the block to be moving over smoothly. So we're just going to move him by one point every like 0 0.03 seconds or something. So it's going to be increment right, sk action, move by x. It's going to just be 1, y, 0, and with a duration of about 0 0.03 seconds. And um, then we're going to do self run action, increment right. Now, as it stands now, if we run the start method, it's literally just going to move the hero over just one point and then it's going to stop. And that's not what we want. So what we want is we want the hero to keep moving, keep incrementing, right? So we want to repeat this action right here um, until the hero hits an obstacle. So to do that, we're going to make a new action called SK action move right. It's going to be SK action. There is a function in the SK action class called repeat action forever. And what we can do for the argument here is just put in the increment right. And so now um, this action right here is essentially just repeating the increment right action over and over and over again. And that's what we want. So change this increment right to move right. And that start method should be good to go. So if we go into my scene, we're going to create those three methods I was talking about um, before. There's going to be the start method, there's going to be the clear method, and then there's going to be the game over method. And I always just um, type these out in my initial game templates when I'm making the basic games that can restart themselves like this, um, just to kind of get the basic template out and just so I know what I have to implement. So um, one thing we need to do is we want to call this start method on the first tap that you do on the iPhone. So to do this, we need to set up a couple Boolean variables. So um, up here, we're going to do at interface, my scene, put a couple parentheses. And um, what this does is if you've worked with properties before is it allows you to set properties for the my scene class that can only be seen within the implementation file. So the two Boolean values we're going to be setting are going to be called is started and is game over. So no other class needs to access those properties. So we're going to put this in the interface in the implementation file rather than in the interface for the header file. So it's going to be at property bool is started along with at property bool is game over. And so um, by default, when you initialize these two Boolean variables, they're going to be set to false or no. So we don't actually have to set those to no in the initialization. 
Okay, so when we start the game, what we want is, so in the start method, this is what's called when you initially click on the scene. Um, if you remember in the first tutorial, there was a little tap to begin label that was kind of flashing on the screen. Um, that's going to be the indicator that the first tap is going to start the hero moving forward. So I want to do self is started equals yes when we call this method. And we also want the hero to start moving forward. So that's really it for the start method. Um, now, to be able to access the start method only on the first click and then have the hero jump afterwards, we're going to go down to the touches began method. So we want to, as you recall, um, the touches began method is, um, I hope you recall, <laughs> is called every single time someone taps on the iPhone screen. So since initially the is started Boolean variable is set to no, we can say if not self dot is started self starts start the scene, and um, when I do, if you do an if statement and just have one line of code, um, after within that if statement you can actually leave out the brackets. I generally do just because I like the look of it. But the same thing you can just do add brackets if you want if that helps uh, keep the, like clear things up for you. But just under, for my style. <laughs> just for my style, I generally just um, keep those brackets out. So it's going to say if the scene is not started, it's going to start the scene. So if we run this, you will. S oh, actually, we need to take out. Um, let's take out that as well, so that the hero doesn't jump while it's starting. So if we start this and we click once you'll see that the hero starts moving forward like this. And I think it actually ran when um, before I deleted that jump line of code. And the hero is moving really slow right now. Um, we'll fix that in just a little bit. So now that first tap is getting the hero moving forward. Now we want it so that the, all the, every subsequent, a sub, subsequent tap after that first one is going to make the hero jump. So basically, um, we're going to say else hero jump. So when the hero jumps when the boolean variable is started is set to yes. And that happens when you call the start method. So if we run this again, you're going to see that it is going to start the hero moving forward without any initial jump, and then every click after that, you see that the hero jumps like this. And we're going to speed the hero up a little bit. Um, go back into the ML Hero class, set this 0 0.03 duration to 0 .0, 0 0.006, let's say. And you'll see that um, when we rerun this, eh, the hero is going to move forward a little bit faster. Yeah, there you go. So um, this video is getting to be eight minutes long, so I will finish the rest of it in the next one.